According to the Brookings Institution, steel, cement and chemicals are the top three emitting industries and they're also the most difficult to decarbonise. Transport is also considered hard to abate, especially air travel and cargo. Well, Mariam Musalam al Kabesi held sustainability and business excellence in the Etihad Aviation Group. She also serves on sustainability task forces in both the UAE's General Civil Aviation Authority and the International Aviation Transport Association. She's a very busy lady but I'm delighted to say that she now joins me in the studio. It's very good to see you, Mariam. I mean, look, tell me about your sustainability role at Etihad. What does that involve? Well, we're responsible. My team and I are responsible for drafting and actioning the sustainability strategy um, in Etihad, which very much revolves around decarbonization, um, uh, biodiversity protection, and uh, waste management. It's a comprehensive uh, strategy customized to Etihad, but also um, uh, one that can be replicated by other airlines um, in, um, throughout uh, the industry. Okay, so it's, it's a trailblazer in its own right. And how are you actually driving that, st that strategy? Because it's quite fast, the actual components. Well, we're a fast country, right? Etihad is Arabic for unity. Um, the UAE stands for, you know, unity for prosperity, unity for people, and unity for planet. And um, in that vein, Etihad is very much in, 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 in trying to trailblaze, as you, as you correctly mentioned, um, the, the path to sustainability. Now, our focus is on decarbonization, and we do this with the concept of unity in mind by uniting a lot of the industry partners, academia, and even our competitors in our climate battle. And I guess that the customers also get involved in that too, because they are very savvy, they're very aware. Indeed. So our journey was very much, um, we were all alone, and then we, we widened the net and included our industry partners. And most recently, we started involving our customers and the corporates we serve. So we launched our Conscious Choices program, one that focuses on the corporates and another on the guests to educate and encourage uh, eco-conscious behavior. Okay, so it's a very holistic approach that you've embraced. Okay, I hear what you're saying about the importance of that sustainability strategy, but why? Is it important to have it in the first place? Does it come from a point of admission? So we admit that we have we we run a very carbon intensive operation. Um, this is an industry that had uh, free reign of pollution for quite some time, and we at Etihad admit that we are a contributor, and therefore we are responsible for the solution to decarbonize the industry, and that's why. We said we will comply with every local and international regulation, but this is not enough for us. We want to go a step ahead. And you know what? We want to even further catalyze technologies and expedite their introduction into our operations. And that's when we started the Greenliner program with Boeing and later the, the Sustainable 50 pro program with Airbus. And in essence, these are um, really call to arms to combat uh, uh, the climate uh, problem. And uh, we look to industry, we look to academia, we look to our competitors um, to join forces and help us devise solutions. And this is an open invitation, to be honest. I think it's very important that we use this platform as an open invitation. Anyone, if you have an idea, if you have a technology, if you have a product you want to demo with us in Etihad, Send me an email, sustainability at etihad.ae, because we are here to trial these things. And I'm very, very proud to say that the, the programs did end up uh, generating new interventions that we have integrated into our operations. So we are going to now fully integrate at Satavia, a UK-based company's tool, artificial intelligence tool in terms of contrail management. Um, we're also going to um, uh, offtake um, uh, sustainable aviation fuel from several ports and, and make this business as usual um, in our operations. And this was basically the success of trials that we uh, uh, used in, um, in, in our programs, our Sustainable 50 and Greenliner programs. Etihad sounds like a company that's in a hurry in the sense that you know what happened in the past, you've been honest enough to admit it, to make for a better traveling experience in the future. Given that aspiration, what will sustainable travel look like in the next 10 years or perhaps the next 20 years with you guys helming it? Well, 
Juliet, I like to put my Emirati hat on. This is a very young country. Imagine what we did in 51 years, right? So I think the future will be very, very positive for us. I, I'm, I'm confident that we will reach decarbonization, net zero, even before um, uh, 2050. Um, I think if I look at a short-term goal and a long-term goal of how um, uh, the future of aviation should look like, I would love to see um, better air traffic management. Um, I would love to see um, operational efficiencies applied in terms of contrail management and the use of low carbon aviation fuels in terms of short term goal and obviously the investment in nature based solutions and potential carbon capture and storage technologies. Long term, I would love to have <clears throat> superb air traffic management and navigation, superb uh, operational efficiencies, and definitely sustainable aviation fuel, either in the form of sustainable aviation fuel credits, something we demoed last year in our book and claim um, experiment, uh, flying a net zero flight to COP, or you know, having sustainable aviation fuel available uh, back door in the UAE. Okay, look, so much to talk about. Sadly, time goes against us, but this is a story that is set to run and run and run. Mariam, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. That was Mariam Musalam al kabasi She heads up sustainability and business excellence in the Etihad Aviation Group.